so it's uh, with the regrets that today we confirm our assessment that Italy's uh, draft budgetary uh, uh, plan is in particularly serious non-compliance with the Council recommendation of 13th of July. Uh, as a consequence, we also re-examined Italy's compliance with the debt reduction requirements. And our analysis, uh, our Article 126.3 report uh, shows that the debt criteria should be considered as not complied. We conclude that an opening uh, debt-based excessive deficit procedure is thus warranted. Uh, let me uh, stress that the situation in Italy is of common concern. Euro area countries are in the same uh, team and should be playing by the same rules. These rules are here to protect us, to provide certainty, stability and mutual trust. And in the situation of very high debt, uh, Italy is essentially planning significant additional borrowing instead of the necessary fiscal prudence. Let's, uh, let me also say that the uh, impact on, of this budget on growth is likely to be negative in our views. Uh, it does not contain significant measures to boost potential growth, and the uncertainty and rising interest rates are taking toll on Italian economy. It also hinders the ability of Italian banks to lend to the Italian companies and households at affordable cost. Italy's debt is forecast to remain at around 131% of GDP over the next uh, two years. This is an average debt burden of 37,000 euros and debt servicing costs of around 1,000 euros per inhabitant per year. Our opinion on Italy's revised draft budget plan confirms our uh, initial assessment that it is uh, in uh, particularly serious non-compliance with the Council recommendation to Italy, uh, which the government itself signed up uh, last July. And this step uh, that we take today uh, is the logical and unavoidable consequence of the decision taken by the Italian authorities not to modify their fiscal targets in the revised DBP they have sent us. Through the past months, uh, the Commission's commitment to dialogue with Italy has been genuine, and uh, it will always be genuine. Both Valdis uh, and I have met uh, Giovanni Tria uh, more times than I can recall now, and I myself uh, spent uh, two days in Rome last month. Yet uh, our questions and also our doubts about the growth, and Valdis uh, had very strong words about that, uh, deficit, debt projections, uh, these uh, questions and doubts obviously persist, and we had no answer to these questions. Where will this extra growth come from? If you look at our forecast, you can see our doubts. Uh, who will pay the bill for this extra spending? We continue uh, to believe that this budget carries risks for Italy's economy, for its companies, for its savers, and for its taxpayers. The European Commission is therefore uh, taking its legal and political responsibilities today in the interest of the citizens of Italy and of the uh, euro area as a whole. The size of Italy's public debt, uh, which we do not see, as you know, declining over the next two years, remains for us the key concern. So we have had today adopted a new report the fifth since 2014, on Italy's debt, but with the conclusion, this time, that Italy is not respecting the debt criterion, and that, uh, as such, a debt-based uh, excessive deficit procedure is warranted. This is not, uh, I insist on that, uh, the opening of an EDP yet. Uh, it is now for the Member States uh, to give their views 
on our report within two weeks, should they agree with the Commission's conclusion, and frankly, it would be more than logical, then the Commission will have to prepare the excessive deficit procedure, as well as a new recommendation for Italy to correct its deficit and debt trajectory. If we have to go along that road, we will discuss the uh, precise modalities in the coming weeks, and first and foremost with the Italian authorities. In this situation, dialogue uh, and cool blood are more than ever required.